Hey guys, welcome to the Dota 2 Basics series where we're going to make you pro. Period. Expect your emotional and sexual MMR to go up by 500 by the end of this video. Today I'm going to talk to you about staggering disables, and if you've played against unfair bots at any point, you'll know exactly what I'm about to explain. Staggering, or spacing, disables is all about squeezing as much time as possible from a stun, slow, silence, sleep, or any other type of disable before chaining it into another disable. The goal is to keep an enemy from performing any actions for as long as possible without any gaps. Depending on the heroes that you're facing, this can be extremely important when going for a kill and a gank, or following up on teamfight initiation. Here is an example of what I'm talking about, and also what gave me the idea to make this video. Stack that. Why did he stack it? <laughs> yeah. As you can probably guess, stacking is the opposite of staggering, and it's when you stack one disable on top of another. But how could DK possibly know, right? I mean, he didn't know how many points I have in Magic Missile. It's better safe than sorry. No. Well, yes, but also no. I agree, it's extremely difficult to know how long a disable will last, whether it's your own or a teammate's. Actually, you know what would be cool is if, like, the game showed you exactly how long each stun or silence or whatever would last, and like with like a like a stopwatch or timer or something. No, no I mean, that would that would drop the skill ceiling way too. Oh. Yep, if you select an enemy hero, you can see precisely how long each and every disable will last on them. So take something like a Marana arrow, for example. It's hard as hell to know how long a Murano arrow stun will last. So, just left click on the enemy and you can see for exactly how much longer they'll be stunned. Chaining the disable is just as easy. You don't need to be perfect. Whenever it looks like the debuff is about to time out, just press your spell hotkey and cast it. Usually you want to be early rather than late to make sure the enemy isn't unstunned at any point and able to cast their BKB or Yules or anything. And you also want to be early to compensate for your hero's cast animation or any stun projectile travel time. Unless you need the nuke damage, there's very rarely a reason to stack your disable on top of another disable for a single hero. Now if you want to start incorporating this into your game, in my opinion, Lion is the best hero to start practicing with. I like Lion because Hex's disable time changes quite a bit depending on how many levels you have in it, but Lion players often underestimate how long it lasts when maxed. Don't worry about any of your teammate spells, just try to chain your Hex and your Earth Spike into each other as late as possible. Start with the Hex, left click the enemy, wait, and then stun. A good way to check if your timing is on point is to see if the enemy unfrogs itself while flying in the air from the spike. Now in the situation that I showed, the timing window looks pretty slim for how long the two stuns were stacked, but I have high standards. Because as you practice this, you'll get better and better at exploiting cast animations as well. So DK's stun has an instant cast animation, and Anti-Mage's blink has a cast animation of 0.4 seconds, so he could have easily waited even after my stun wore off before casting Dragon Tail. But that knowledge comes with practice. Thanks for watching, my name's Tsunami. Here's my 6.88 analysis as a bonus. PA is a little bit better, Life Stealer is a little bit worse, Ursa's pretty good, Coddle's secretly the best support that no one's playing, and Kanka is- STOP BUFFING THIS HERO!